listening to Jersey Central with Bert Barron on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. Call Jersey Central at 732-545-9282. Toll free at 888-545-9282. Watch Jersey Central live online at WCTCAM.com or listen on your smartphone with the iHeartRadio or TuneIn app. Connect with WCTC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube by searching 1450 WCTC. And now back to Jersey's Morning Show. Jersey Central with Burt Barrett. 738 back on Jersey Central on the new talk radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Contest coming up sometime between now and 8 o'clock. I'll give away my final pair of passes to experience live-in theater and check out Lombardi Case 1975. In New York City on Sunday, May uh, 22nd, your chance to win that is coming up. We've also got our Need to Know Things. We'll do that in this half hour as well. Uh, Budweiser announcing that they were going to be renaming their beer America. Set off a media firestorm, of course. We talked about it on this show. People asking, is this a joke? Is this allowable? Are they serious? So let's run the question by my guest who's on the Raritan Bay Medical Center, Jersey Newsmaker Hotline. She's the former vice president of brand for Virgin, Virgin the Richard Branson Companies. And uh, she is responsible for some big-time brands around the world, that's for sure. So let's ask my guest uh, who is with us uh, here this morning, Julie Catino, if this is uh, a good idea or not. Uh, Julie, uh, it's Bert Barron, and I think you and I agree that this was not a good move for Budweiser, right? No, I, I think it's a move that, uh, like that here, kind of falls flat. Mm, well said. Nice pun. I mean, your name, your brand is who you are. I mean, McDonald's, Budweiser, uh, uh, these companies, Geico, they spend millions of dollars branding day in and day out why why change your name why do that I, I i was baffled by the whole thing myself well you know Bert, usually i'm in favor of a brand twist which is when a brand tries to do something new and different in fact i celebrate a lot of brand twists in my in my book called twist but i feel like for this one there's not a lot of strategy behind it um i feel like they're twisting the Budweiser brand with the brand of America, which face it right now is a brand in a bit of a crisis. I think from the world's, uh, the eyes of the world internationally too would have to say the same thing. And it's probably what makes the timing even worse. I would think, I mean, uh, my radio station is a brand. I'm trying to build a talk radio brand called WCTC. Uh, our colors are red and black. Uh, if I did a green logo on St. Patrick's day, that's, that's not the end of the world then for me. Right. Yeah, right, because you're still being true to who you are. And I think the Budweiser brand already stands for America. I mean, they're very red, white, and blue. They've done a terrific job with their Super Bowl ads, with the Clydesdales, of having this warm and fuzzy American feeling. This feels just like a, a twist that's gone a step too far to me. Uh, recall, if you could, and obviously this is your, your, your wheelhouse here, uh, some of the worst brand moves or brand ideas that you've seen in your career. There have been a couple of real bad ones, I bet. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because they all seem to recover. But, you know, everybody talks about uh, new Coke, for example, oh. rebranding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I, I, and I think that's a great example, actually, because that's taking a product where there really wasn't something wrong with it. You know, people loved it. And I, I think a, a bunch of branders and marketers, you know, may feel like they constantly need to do something new. Um, but new isn't always better. No, this is true. Uh, yeah, and that, it was the, the mid-'80s, if, if I remember correctly, and then you had a choice. You could buy the new Coke or the old Coke, and then they just got rid of the new Coke eventually, right? Is that kind of how it played out? Yeah, they did. And, and, and speaking of Coke, I think they're actually doing a really interesting twist right now that's meaningful to people, uh, you know, with allowing you to customize the packaging with your own name. Oh, right. So they're taking what Coke stands for, which is enjoyment and refreshment, and allowing the customer in, and allowing the customer to have some control feels to me like this Budweiser, it's not quite connecting. And, and face it, with everything that's happening in, in politics right now, I'm not sure we're going to want a lot of more beer drinkers. You know, well said. Uh, talking <laughs> and, and celebrating uh, America. Very good. Who's good at it, Julie? Who have you seen over the years? Uh, what companies or corporations just, just got it nailed when it comes to branding themselves? Well, I think Apple is the obvious choice. I mean, they, they consistently come out with – uh, in-store experiences with Genius Bar and new products that people just can't get enough of, great advertising, really great product design. And when they switched with other companies a few years back, uh, Apple did a partnership um, 
with uh, Nike so that you could program your running music, you know, and have a sensor in your shoe. Those were two like-minded brands that really worked well together, that really twisted well together. Our guest is Julie Catino We're here on Jersey Central on the New Talk Radio WCTC. Best-selling author, uh, check out her new book called Twist, How Fresh Perspectives Build Breakthrough Brands. And I just love that, and I'm all about branding. I, I love to watch it done well, Julie, and I, I cringe when I see it done poorly, as I'm sure you do as well. Uh, major book retailers, uh, if someone wants to purchase a copy of your book? Yeah, major book and Amazon is a great way as well. Talking about another great brand. You know what? You beat me to it. Talk <laughs> talk about a brand that's got it nailed. I can I can see that little smiley face with the arrow at the bottom right now. Exactly, and you get excited about that. I mean, that's a brand touch point. You know, the best time uh, in your brand experience with Amazon is not necessarily ordering. It's when what you've ordered comes to your door, and they know that, and they celebrate it with that smiley package. Yeah, even the uh, – talk about Amazon in the book a lot. Cool. And even, the uh, you know, you, you think about the social media icons. I mean, the Facebook logo and the, the Twitter logo with the little bird. Unmistakable. They, as soon as you see that, you know exactly what it is. And it seemed like those brands built familiarity – Almost overnight, so quickly, it seemed like. Uh, that's fair to say. I mean, someone sees uh, the logo, they know those right away nowadays, right, Julie? Yeah, it, and Target is another great example of that. And in mm. my book, I talk about that as word of eye. You know, it used to be word of mouth is the way that we referred to brands and recommended them to our you know, friends and family. And now it's word of eye. A lot more brands are very visual. Target, Apple, Twitter. You see them right away, you know who they are, and then you can share them on social media with your friends and family and really build up loyal brand ambassadors. Very cool. You haven't had a chance to take a peek at our logo and our brand. Have you had a chance yet? I haven't, but I'd be happy to do a brand health check. Well, that's what I need. I mean, it, it's got our call letters, WCTC. It, it's got our dial position, which is 1450 AM. It's got our slogan at the bottom, the voice of Central Jersey. I think it's a pretty solid brand. You want to? I would love for you to just take a peek at it and give me some feedback when you get a chance. Yeah, and I, I actually did. Uh, I did look quicker this morning, and I noticed the colors. You've got a very vibrant red uh, that you're really doing a great job of owning. And I'm a big fan of owning color. When I was the VP of brand of Virgin, you know, our red was something that stood out, was consistent across all our businesses, and people really came to associate with the brand. So my brand colors are purple. They're all over the cover, cover of my book. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wearing it right now. My office <laughs> is purple. Um, so I really believe in owning a color, and I, I think that's one thing you definitely have in your favor, and you should you should be very consistent with that. Well, wow, that's great. I'm, I'm flattered. Julie Catino said that our brand is fantastic. Wow, that's the best news I've heard all day. That just made my Friday the 13th a lot better. <laughs> Julie, thank you so much. Uh, obviously, I, I love your feedback here on this whole Budweiser slash America thing. Uh, let's see what happens. Apparently, they're going to run this through through Election Day and then just kind of turn the switch back and go back to the old name. Is that the plan at this point, right? Yeah, I think that is the plan. But, it, you know, it's hard to turn things around like that. And I have a feeling that this may have been something in the works uh, for months and months and might not be taking into account the current political climate. You know, I also think the bar call is a little bit, you know, people like to go to a bar and order a buzz. Right. You know, they like to order. I'm not sure what you ordered. You know, I, I can't really see battling up to my, my favorite bar and saying I want an America <laughs> right, or right. an America or an AMA. You know, I mean, how are you going to? You know, how are you going to shorten that to something that people can really uh, own, take ownership of? Could you see a guy, uh, Julie, uh, here, uh, you know, welding on the turnpike, a 12-hour shift here in Jersey and going to his favorite watering hole, and the bartender says, uh-uh-uh, we don't have that here. You have to order it by the other name. Yeah, watch how fast uh, that guy either takes a swing at the bartender or walks out, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would want to be in that bar, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they'll sell him what he wants. But, you know, I, I think Budweiser needs to appeal not necessarily to the, you know, to the people who are already buying and loyal fans of the of the brand. I think their competition is really among millennials and uh, all the craft beers, yeah. beers that feel very authentic and they have a really, you know, uh, deep story to them. I mean, a great brand is a story well told. That's, that's something that we talk about in the book. And, and so... You know, I, I'm not sure going after more people who are already committed to the brand is the right strategy. I think they need to do a, twi a twist, something fresh, but something that would appeal to millennials. Yeah, real good. Uh, one final time, Julia, the name of your new book and how people can purchase it? It's called Twist, 
and they can go to the twistbook.com and it'll take you right to Amazon. And uh, there's a, a place to, on the website also to talk about your own twist, to ask questions. And I, I love feedback, and I, I'd love to talk to people about their individual brands. Terrific stuff. Julie Catino, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, have a great weekend and uh, good information. Really appreciate you sharing it with, with us this morning. Thanks so much, Bert. All right, thank you. All right, Julie Catino, my guest on the Raritan.